Punters and dribblers, nut trucker, trucker hats. I truck nut on the back and the trucking of nut on the front. These are on sale Tuesday, 6 p.m., hellosport.shop. Very limited, far less numbers than we would do for a usual. We call them a small batch. That's what I'm calling them anyway. Limited run. Limited run, nut limited trucker, run. trucker hats. If you like the sacred art of truck and nut, if you enjoy watching someone truck nut, if you respect the trucking of nut, if you're a back fence type operator, if you're a front fence type operator, this is the fucking hat for you, yep. okay? It's a man driving a truck full of nut, students. It says, I truck nut on the back. It's a fucking great shape. We went through 50 samples to find the right shape. It's deep. It's mean. It's keen. It's the greatest purchase you can make right now. Hello, sport.shot, 6 p.m. Tuesday night. If you want to chuck a bit of C with the board. It's deep, mate, Kane. Was it deep? What did you say? It's deep. It's neat. It's deep. It's mean. It's keen. Is that what I said? It's deep. It's mean. It's keen. I can't remember. The what hottest I... hat you've ever seen. Bang. Done. Love it. Love it. You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. We've got a hoarding issue here at Hello Sport. Got a, bit of, got a bit of hoarder about us, don't we, mate? And it's becoming it's becoming annoying because I actually crave cleanliness and order mm. and simplicity. I was gonna I was honestly the other night gonna say to Steph, uh, like, go home, put the girls to bed, and then I was like, I'm gonna go back to the office by myself. Just potter around, just tidy this fucking joint. You were going to potter. I was going to come around here and I was going to fucking Harry Potter around the joint. You were going to potter around. I was going to whatever a disappearing fucking spell was and just clean house. Like when you think about how much shit is in our fucking storage area out there. I reckon, it's a lot. I reckon truthfully, 10% yeah. necessary. Uh, well, can I come over the top of you? And this is a real insight into Hello Sport HQ here, punters and dribblers. So <laughs> you're in for a real treat here. We need the time crisis. It has sentimental value. Yes, of course. But it's broken currently. It's actually, it actually works all well, right. Well, if you leave it on for long enough, it starts to fire up. But if you just turn it on to play, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So it needs, it needs to be warmed Not up, so to speak. Not completely broken, but like warmed up for like hours. Like spark plugs on an old diesel ute. If you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Now, we've also got a couch in there. I think a six-piece modular, Tom, yep. that's not going anywhere no. with a built-in radio. Mm. That remains. We've, Despite the fact it's very unuseful. That's right. Although it does remain. We've got old uh, pieces of cardboard or like those white signs that we fucking painted shit on once upon a time. We've got the big day rosé pop-up. That's important. Stuff, which is important. In the tubs, I'm more talking I about. think you're talking tubs. Yeah. So 90% of the stuff in the tubs is probably a better way of phrasing Yeah, you're right. That. But there's like five or six tubs. Full of shit. Full of absolute shit. We, we brought back from Las Vegas our shooting range targets that are now sitting on the floor. But what about this, Tom? What if we found... A home for these items, right? Just work with me here. Mm -hmm. If we were to move studio, which we will. Yeah. Not we, right now, no, but, but we, will, we will. Because we're growing and we've outgrown our small home. What if we had like a memory room? I know. Or a pool room yeah. where all of our things could be displayed? Yeah. Or is that just a fucking pipe dream? And the chances of us getting framed up our shooting targets from Vegas, is that just... Is that just dumb? I think that the chances of them ever getting used, unlikely. But I think that there is some, there's some sentimental shit in that garage that we could potentially, you know, we've just got, we're adding, we're adding pieces to the, to the, the Shane Keith puzzle and now we have no room here. Shout out to uh, um, You Wouldn't, who have just joined us. Go check out You Wouldn't, um, new podcast, who's come under the umbrella. So there's no fucking room. There's no fucking room. There's just fucking. <laughs> but also, uh, sometimes everywhere. I don't know if we like. There's not enough room. But, but then we do we? Do, but then shit. do we do enough? I'll be honest with you. It's important that I'm honest with the punter and the dribbler. I need to be as honest as I possibly can. 
and I'm ashamed to say this. Absolutely ashamed, humiliated even. Jesus. The last dribble sits on the floor over there. It's not even hung. No, no, no. That dartboard that, that was given to us. Which is our favourite gift. Our favourite gift, not even hung. Not, not, to, not to impugn the other gifts we've had. Thank you so much for them. But like that dartboard is craftsmanship. What if you put it on that wall? You could put the, what, the dartboard? Yeah. It's around too much tech shit. Yeah, you can't trust drunk cunts. No. That's the problem. No, you can't. And we've looked. Heaven fucking knows we've looked for a spot for this dartboard and we can't find one because we don't trust the aim of a drunk Sebo, a techie Sebo. Techie Sebo. You can't put it on that bathroom, the door to go towards the bathroom. Someone will walk in, open the door and get a dart in the eye. We can't put it on the set. They'll get ruined. We can't put it around technology. Get fucked. (laughs) So, you know, our favourite ever gift, the dartboard sits on the floor over there behind the about even desk. I mean, and yet, as these things sit, Tom, as these things sit, we've got shit everywhere else that appears to have prior to place. Boxes over here. Fucking boxes over there. The, the garage is a complete mess. Mm. Now, like, I mean, look, a broken trophy, which you snapped the other day. I did snap it, but, um, it was, but I maintained not made of the right stuff. Well, the trophy. Well, yep. it was a very, it was a very delicate golf club on there, and it just like that golf champions v- trophy, which is huge and ostentatious, and we <sighs> got it to make a bit beats. of a cheap gag about us beating Seb and Street. Hamish Street. Check it out. That was our first match play. Tom, were, Tom and I were in. Absolutely crushed them. Got into Street's mind immediately. I was driving two seventy into the wind. Yeah, I was putting my ass off. I actually don't know if I was. Proof to the pudding. Would probably suggest I wasn't. Check the tapes. It happened. So. I mean, that's got pride of place. Listen, but the last dribble on the floor, not good enough. You know what else has pride not of good place enough. on that table, though? Cords. Just cords. Anyway, listen, do you, is it right for us to come here on our own show? And, you know, people just want a distraction. They want something to listen to. And we just come in and we just we complain about the state of this place. We're not complaining. We're being honest mm. and authentic. Yeah. Speaking truth, though. That's right. Speaking truth. Uh, with that in mind, if you have like a like a great space, you want to you want to maybe a space dangle in front of, of us like for Alexandria, later in the year. Marigville, sure. fucking, it can be anywhere. If you want to give us a really, 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 really competitive price, that'd be really. Then cool. we're all ears. We're not moving right now, but we're prepared to move in six months. Bit of housekeeping while we're on it. We're actually looking for a sales guy yeah, or right. girl, but sales guy is almost more of a colloquial term. Like I'm a big sales guy. Um, sales guy or girl yes but that's basically all I mean like fucking if you've got experience reach out I don't know if I want to go into too much detail obviously you need to be able to fucking well the detail I'll go into is you need to know how to fucking sell podcasts like you need to be you need to have like media connections and shit podcast social et al if there's a job here there's a job going that's all we're saying well there's there's a, a job will be created yeah there's not one going currently. Well, no, as in there is a job like going for you. Not like there's a job. If you're great going. and we like you, girl or guy, job's yours. Yeah. And, and we can iron it. We can iron out creases later. And that's, that's across that's, everything. That's across Hello Sport. We mean well about even. You wouldn't fucking anything else that comes up. Yeah. Oh, there's 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 things. There's things. We should like. Well, we, this seems like a job that you probably need to be a little more formal with as well. I don't know why. It just feels what do you mean? Like, well, like as in. Sales guys aren't formal. They're no, fucking, I know, but like, do we need to? They're we renegades, need to like mate. They're cowboys. Up, do I need to fire up the old LinkedIn account? You? Well, I've got one. I fucking hate it. Why would I've, you fire up the LinkedIn account? Wasn't well, you go and find someone? Oh fuck that! We're hoping someone comes to us. I know. We I don't do. want to fire up shit. I know, but you might have to send right? in your regos to. If you're sick of your sales job and you want to just. Get out of the fucking rat race. I mean, you'll still technically be in it, but you'll be way more relaxed. But also, if you're like a Devon salesman, right? If that's all you've ever done and that's all you know is selling Dubbo's finest export, Devon, I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of crossover. I'm happy to sit down and have a yarn with mm-hmm. you. We won't though. But it's... I, I, you're not we happy to sort sit down. You're not, you won't n- sit down and have a yarn with the Devon salesman. If you, dude, <laughs> if you sell Devon... I'll, let's, no, I'll have a beer true. with you. No, no, that's true. I'll have a beer with you because, like, there's a yarn. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But you probably won't. Not probably. You, you won't, won't get a job. You won't get a job. No, you won't get a job. But a little, you know, you want to you peek behind the uh, the the curtain. 
when we advertised for our uh, most latest, most recent hire, shout out to the White Mamba, who is replacing Tommy Tobler today, who is off sick. Cody K, Cody Bryan. There was a there was a particular. I don't want to shame anyone. We got a we got a resume in there, and one of the skill sets that they said, like what you know, and it's like your skills, was competent in, in speaking English. Oh yeah, someone said that they could speak English well. And all they'd done is work at like a news agency. And yeah. like, that's fine. You don't, but, but it's like old fucking White Mumba over here basically had me coming with his resume. Well, White Mumba, he, he saw the brief, he saw what we're asking for, and he delivered and then some, as opposed to we didn't ask for someone that works at a news agency. No. Or we didn't, we didn't I think respect, that- I respect, I respect news agencies. In this great nation. And news agents. And news agents. Isn't the people, is that what you'd be called if you worked at a news agent? Are you an agent of the news? Is that what you're called or are you just, you just uh, work at one? I think, I think that you work in a news agency. I don't know if you'd be called a news agent, although now you've got me thinking. Uh. But I mean, I like going into a news agency and buying the paper, maybe buying a scratchy, maybe buying a lotto ticket, maybe getting a power rate. Like, I like that. And there's nothing wrong with it. No. But it doesn't necessarily cross over with what we do here at, he- at SKP. That's Shane Keith Production. Yeah. Uh, it, it also felt like it wasn't a prerequisite we needed to specify that English be something you were competent in. Competent, actually, we need more than competent. Like, what's competent? Is that like, I can understand it? You need to be... Na- to- you need to be... Or what's the word? Uh, fluent? Fluent in English. Yeah. doesn't need to be your first language. No, fuck no. But you need to be able to fucking have a yarn with me. Wasn't and my wife's first language. I'm not anti non English speaking people. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. not what we're about. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't need to be your first language, but it, you need to be fluent in it. Yeah. I don't think that's asking for too much. No. For a bloke that doesn't speak any other languages, no. how the fuck would we talk to each no, other? No, that would be difficult. So, unfortunately, if, if you, you don't, don't speak if you don't speak any English, you're fucked. Yeah. Well, you probably um, can't even understand this, so you, you, well, you think, won't be applying. And if you think that's not, if you don't think that's right, too bad, because I'm making the fucking calls over here and I'm calling the shots. Make sense? Cool. Submissions. Turbo at hellosport.com.au. Don't send through bullshit. Don't send through wishy-washy nonsense. If you're a sales guy or girl and you want to get the fuck out of what you're doing, come join us and, you know, you can... You can uh, come to the green pasture, as it were. The yeah. green field. The, the grass will, is greener on the other side. It That's is. The only is it greener? White Mamba? Absolutely. So I actually feel bad now we didn't set him up with a camera. Well, fuck it. No, I, look, he's not getting one. It's too late. But White Mamba didn't get a camera, and I feel bad now. Now, White Mamba is on the ones and twos, not the ones and twos. He's Dioring today. He said he's been practicing, so I really? like that. Yeah, just at home. Really? <laughs> yeah. I can't tell if you're taking the piss or not. <laughs> No, when I sit over there in my corner, um, I just try and keep pace, you know? So as in if you hear us like saying something like... Brrr. Yeah, sometimes. Well, I just saw the heat yeah. that Tobler got on his debut and I was like, I better be, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'll say, look, That's, the kid's good. Yeah, he is. The kid's and, really and good. listen, listen, I don't want to like... But you take a day off, you take a day off, right? You miss your like... Tobler's well, listen, not listen, in. listen, Tom Brady... Okay, you know I can't remember. Bra- I can't remember the the quarterback's name that he replaced at Page uh, that, in New England. The, that's the point. But who's that? What was that guy's name? Fucking who knows? He I'm goes. He goes. He fucks off with injury, and then the Tom big Brady fella comes in. Man. Tom Brady wins. He wins Super, they go Bowls, to the Super Bowl, and that's it. But they won the Super Bowl that they year. They won the I Super Bowl that year. Yeah. So, listen, we love Tobler, but. Um, he wasn't promised a lifelong position on that desk, and if Cody steps up, well, he was promised know. nothing. Promise absolutely nothing. Anyway, and you know, the cream rises to the top, and if you're the best at the job, then you get the job. It's very simple. There is a world where I don't think Tobler was practicing Dioring before he became a Diora. No, I think that he was of the opinion that past Dior, Dave, was a bit special or a bit slow mm. at the job. I think underestimated what it takes to be a great Diora. And came in high on his own supply, a bit cocky, a bit short. I'll just sure dye my himself. hair blue. That's yep. enough. No, yep. it's not. It's not enough. Well, I love that you dyed your no, hair. No, it was blue. great. Yeah, it was fucking terrific. But you've also got to be able to look shit up. So we'll see how Cody K well, goes today. Have you got anything for us, Ed? Did we ask? Have we asked any questions that you may have already deored? Not yet. 
Okay. Reverse nothing. That's all right. But maybe I tell you what, I tell you what Dior is out there should should be aware of as well. And obviously I'm kind of just speaking directly to Cody or Toddler or Willie B there. If you hear us just talk about something, you should almost just start Dior on it in case you're able to add some information to it. I think that's where he's been practicing. Uh, also, shout out to Cody for lifting our design game. Thank you to all that have well, noticed. You've, well, they have. They've, uh, he designed the new punters and dribblers uh, signage, if you could use that word. What does everyone think about that 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 new... I fucking love it. I like it. Got my Is that so, like if, if that went on a shirt, would people's penises and, and vaginas start to tingle? I think so. I think so. I'm asking a general question. Well, the there's no one to give you a direct answer, though, right? So, but I'm they can to... they can provide feedback in other ways. Yeah, directly they can. Yeah, they, they 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 comment, but like right now they can't. So I mean, otherwise you could ask that. I was ask, letting the, it, ask the question again. I was letting it hang in the air. Yeah, yeah ask it again. I was letting it hang in no, the no, air. No, ask it again. No, I've already said it. No, I'm just saying, just do it, and then it'll play out. Just go. Ask it. Ask it again. Okay. Do the punter and the dribbler and the dribblette would they be interested in potentially seeing white mumbers? punters and dribblers artwork on a shirt would that tingle their penises and vaginas so we're, we're giving you room to like leave comments here that does that make case. sense that was where that was where they'd yes yes yeah, that's it that's or no I'd be shocked I'd be a little offended yeah I'd be upset uh, so sales guy or girl yep. reach out Turbo at halosport.com.au. Punters and dribblers, as always, we are brought to you by the primo betting platform of this great nation of ours, and that's Neds. Big fans of Neds. We love Neds. They uh, have been huge supporters of us, huge supporters of everything we do over here, and we love them. Now, Eddie, if you're a punter or a dribbler and you want to engage with the community on Neds, how are you doing? It's very, very simple. Either you can follow Tom and I... It's even toddler if you're a loser. You can follow our profiles in the Ned's profile section, but I think a greater use of your time, gen, uh, generally speaking, is to join the About Even group, under groups. Now, the code to get in is Dribbler. If it's not Dribbler, it's Dribblers. Forgive me. There you can follow all our tips, me, Shebos, Gurus, Burmos, sometimes Tobler, but again, who cares about him? It's a great community environment where we tip winners, we tip losers, mostly learners, losers, but sometimes winners. That's it. Shout out to Neds. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. What's caught your eye this week, Tom? Mate, this is, today feels like it's a, it's a Thursday podcast of old. Like, it's funny, even with rugby league back and all the fucking racism shit aside, uh, there's not much... It doesn't feel like there's a fuckload going on in the world of sport at the moment, right? Like, we fucked the Kiwis up on Monday. We saw that. They embarrassed themselves in the cricket, right? They obviously can't win. They have no idea what they're doing. They Well, they got nervous. The they got victory. nervous. But they do. They haven't beaten us for 30 years or something. They've beaten us once in 30 years. And one, you, know, you know what I'm saying? They just, they suck. Um, so there was that, but that happened on Monday. I'm like trying to, This it feels like a Thursday potty to me where there's not actually like an overt amount of rugby league. This is being recorded on a Wednesday. Arvo, punters and dribblers. I am... I'm a little consumed by this royal photo scandal. It's real tinfoil hat shit for me. Uh, princess, is she princess or queen? Kate? No, she's a princess, right? Kate? She would be... Kate? Is that her name? Yeah, Kate, Kate. Middleton. She would be... She would be a princess. Princess Kate... Of Wales? Uh, uh, Kate, princess of Wales. Sure. She has I been think. sort of... She's had some health scare. She's been missing in action. Is her f is something to do with her face? No, no. I think it was like her abdominal. No. Yeah, she had abdominal surgery. Quick, good abdominal surgery, right? So it wasn't. I was someone again. I I heard a whisper on a wind that there might be something to do with her face. Is that bullshit? This is uh, all abdominal. Into it. So apparently, abdominal surgery, MIA. We don't know what the surgery was for, but she's been out of action, and everyone's like, "What the fuck's going on? Where is she?" Yep. People like are really always like, "Where are you?" With the royal family, it would seem. Then the fucking palace are like, oh, she's back. Here's a photo. Now, you've got to be some sort of sick puppy to really care enough to go and, like, inspect it. 
inspect the photo, but Photoshop City. Hands were weird, apparently. Wasn't wearing a wedding ring. Something to do with the buttons. Now, when that was called out by psychopaths who have too much time on their hands... Well, it was rejected by newspapers. Only after someone realised it. Initially, it wasn't. Initially, it was fucking published. Oh, right. So it was yeah. only the sickos of the internet. Well, I mean, does that surprise you? No, though? no, it doesn't at all. In fact, it, it actually is... The nothing part of goes... The no, nothing. You can't get... Listen, in our world, even just to use our little tiny niche as, a, as, a, as a an example... A corner of the internet. Nothing gets through the keeper. No. Nothing no. gets through the keeper at all, let alone the royal family. I'll remind you of this fact, Tom. I believe Princess Diana, may she, may she rest in peace, the most photographed person all time. At the time, probably not anymore. No, all time. Bullshit. I think that was when, but that's that's the zenith of... The, t- the photo. Of, uh, no, of magazines. Yeah, and but of, photos of, now... Of, tab- of tabloids. Yeah, but photos now are more ubiquitous, so like, there's no way she'd be the most photographed person now, surely. Cody K. On the ones and twos. Yeah, she... So, with the image that came out, basically it was, like you said, like a, just a bunch of people were kind of speculating that it had been edited and, like, blurred and stuff, um, especially, like, around their hands. I uh, couldn't see anything about about the face. Okay. Now, look if Princess Di is still the most photos, photographed person of all time. Anyway, so this photo has now been debunked as fake, right? Kate comes out. Kate of missing in action fame and is like, oh, sorry, like a lot of fucking photographers, I'm a bit of a, uh, you know, I like to uh, experiment with Photoshop and editing. Like, are you telling me that Kate is getting on to fucking Adobe Premiere or whatever the fuck it's called, Adobe Photoshop, and photoshopping her family photos that then... Do you don't think every photo that gets released by the palace is vetted by a thousand cunts? Are you telling me that she is photoshopping photos where her wedding ring's fucking not there anymore, where her hands are all weird and shit, and then they're getting released? Or, which is what, like, I feel like she's been thrown under the bus by the palace. Where they've been like, just come out and say you photoshopped it. Obviously, there's something more going on. We can't admit to it that this whole thing's fucking bullshit and that you may even be dead. I hope that's not the case. But, you know, there's something more going on. Well, listen. I think that we like as a people to let our, our minds run wild and free like like Brumbies in... in uh... On a paddock. Just well, before the helicopters well, fly Well, like, like Brumbies in the snowy, mate. You know what I mean? Wild and free. Before they get culled from a helicopter. Well, pre cull a pre cull Brumby. Yeah, okay. Pre cull Yeah, good. Not even aware of the cull. No, they don't know. Helicopter's not in the air. They yet. can't hear the chopper. Well, the helicopter's not in the air. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're actually fueling up the chopper. At they're the fueling the bitch up. Yeah, it hasn't yeah, left yeah. the fucking they're pad, loading, so it's got freedom on its mind. They're loading mind. bullets into the guns, fueling up the chopper. These Brumbies are completely unaware that they're about to be murdered. But at this point in time the that I'm referring to, they're good to go. Yeah, okay. Cool. They're free as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> We can let our minds wander mm. to a point where we think that maybe Kate uh, of of Middleton, formerly fame, yep. is dead and that they're I just... I don't actually think she's dead because I think she was literally photographed like going to a function the other day. Right, like, right. Something's up. Is there, a, is there a chance that Kate Middleton turns out to be like many other women out there who maybe aren't happy about a particular part of a photo of their body. Maybe she's seen her hands and said, I don't like them, and she's face-tuned them and fucked them up. Is that possible? Have you seen the photo? Because it's like, it's not like that much has been done. The hands don't, like, yes, of course, that is possible. Absolutely it is. I'm just trying to work out why the fuck they would release an edited photo to what end, to what point. Because if she's sicker than she, then they're, they're letting But she, you said she's been seen in public well, after that. Th- you know what? And I, I sem- semi-retract that. I read that she was photographed like, and you'll have to look this up, Cody, because I don't know what I'm talking about. But that she was like photographed leaving whatever fucking palace that she was at with Princess uh, Prince William. Mm. Shave your head, bruh. Um... And like he the, does shave it, sort of, doesn't he? No. Anyway, he was going <laughs> somewhere, and she didn't go with him. She went somewhere else, but you didn't really know. So it's like she's there, but like, yep. It just seems like they're lying to the punter and the dribbler. And I'm just like, what's going on? Why are you photoshopping that shit? Why are you sending it out? Then her being like, oh, sorry, yeah, whoops, I photoshopped. In what world? 
They like to move in the shadows. They, they always are. have. They do, but as if she just fucking gets to post something. Like, it's all, from everything you hear, like, that's the most, they're the most tightly controlled fucking people on earth. Like, you think she just gets to Photoshop photos and submit them for release? I don't think, well, un, it seems unlikely, doesn't it? But yeah. also, nothing surprises me anymore. You know, it's... it's so then wouldn't it... It's, but it's it? rumour after rumour with the royal family. You know, what? like, last year, I mean, last month, rather, Charles the King... He gets cancer. People think he's about to drop dead and die. He doesn't sound like he's well. He doesn't sound like he's well. What's going on here? Is Kate with us? Is she not? I mean, there's, it's it's just it's what it's one uh, conspiracy theory to another with the royal family. I think I heard another conspiracy theory today, and it's not like again, it's not the pegging one. <laughs> no, no, not the not the pegging one. This is <laughs> this is a different one that I saw, and it, this is something that like. I'm not out there seeking these, right? And obviously algorithms are what they are, but this is like our Hello Sport YouTube, so it's not even something where it's like... It's, it's just out, out there. It's just out there. That uh, Manuel Macron, Macron, is he the head of fucking... Uh, is he the French, French president? Prime minister, whatever it is. Yeah, Macron is Macron. the French president, yeah. That his wife, who's 70, and he's like 50-something... He's pretty good looking. Yeah, for but, someone of his age. Well, first, okay. So the, the the yarn is that she's a man. Oh my god! <laughs> really? Yeah. Does she, is is that fair income? So twenty years his senior and a man. Bro, apparently a teacher at his school, and he was fifteen when he met her. That's like not even. I don't even know if that's disputed. That part is that, that French shit, or is that like a, is that no, odd? I think that's odd. Even for the French. I listen. I know the French like to you know get down, but like. And again, I'm not. I'm not like I'm. We've got a couple of French listeners. I think Sammy. Sam Asif. I think Sam yeah, Asif. Uh, f- big I, fan of your work. You're bro. actually. You're actually Sam Asif. Probably one of the more preposterous uh, dribblers that we have, just in terms of like how we came across your desk. But we love you. No, big we fan absolutely of your work. love you. He We're just. I'm just agent. wondering if in your country it's normal for that sort of thing to go on. Reach out, actually. Is that like a nice? Is that sort a, of situation? Well, no. Well, not if it's. Well, yeah. Sure, maybe. But also, nice. is, yeah. But is there like is it is there a, is it a is there like whispers in amongst the sort of French water coolers that Macron's miso actually a dude? Yeah, Sammy, you're the you're the best place. Well, given that you're the only French person I know, you're best place to <laughs> to help us out. Yeah, is it? Have you found anything about? Yeah, I was just looking into it. He said he's worked with her since like the eighties. Um, That's not enough info. When did they meet? He's like just come out basically and denied that she's a man, right? Which, which you would, which you would. Sure. If fact, like if if his uh, wife or husband has been masquerading as a woman for for these entire presidency, I think you'd be looking to. Well, his entire yeah, that would be. And again, I found it more funny that like if that were true, let's just. Let's allow our minds to wander on a Thursday. In fact, I'm like a like a Brumby pre Carl. Like Brumby pre Carl. <laughs> Chopper not in the sky yet. No bird in the sky yet. Um, but like, if that story broke, that Macron's wife was actually a seventy-year-old man, man mm. and they've been hiding that for however long, that would be the most absurd. Political scandal of all time, right? Do you think more absurd than Bill getting worked in the office? That's Bill Clinton. What do you reckon? You're telling me a, a, a horny older fucking man getting sucked off. The most powerful man on the planet getting sucked off by, by a an fucking intern. staffer. <laughs> by an intern. Is, yeah, is more crazy than yeah. the fucking leader of France being married to a man who's 30 years his senior. And masquerading, and as, a masquerading woman. as a woman. Not trans, just masquerading as a woman. Well, maybe trans. I don't know. But that dressed. hasn't been communicated. No, 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 exactly. That would be bigger than Bill Clinton getting sucked off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The Yanks moved the needle, mate. Yeah, but like, Eddie. No. Jesus well, listen, Christ. listen. Is there anything, have you found anything there? I just, all I can find is that it was a conspiracy theory that was published in like a French far right journal. Um, okay. And it was claimed that it, that it was a result of a three-year investigation supported by pseudo experts. So it's very uh, pseudo experts. What, 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 what website? Ah, uh, this ah uh, this is from TRT World. What's that? I'm just reading like a. It's like just like a news article. Um, right. But the the um, 
the journal was called Fates a Documents, like some French. I wonder. So, the, and again, this is. I don't have a dog in the fight here because I didn't. I I barely know much about what's going on in France generally, right? In fact, I I know almost nothing. Um, the uh, whatever this thing was that was pushing me towards uh, extremely left of field uh, conspiracy theories was like, there's no photos of this person when they're younger. They're like, just if it was if you were fucking if you're if you're a woman, just show me photos of you. When you're like at college, right? So that's like, or like that, show but us that's, but that's not evidence. It's not evidence to prove that. Of course no. it's not. Of course no. it's not. The and the and the where I mean there are many there are many <laughs> there are many points in in this yarn that don't necessarily stack up punters and dribblers, um, and one of those being prove it or you're or you're guilty. <laughs> 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 Yeah, prove it or you're guilty prove is not really how we work. Um, you know, so I am aware of that, but it was only because we got onto fucking Kate Middleton's photo. So what do you there. think's happening with Kate Middleton? I don't know. Just to me, it seems like why would she be like, as if I just find it hard to believe she's out there photoshopping, fucking around. The photo was meant to be this like, she's back. Yes. Thing yes. And it's been photoshopped, and then now it's like, oh no, sorry, I just fuck around on Photoshop, and it's like, but the palace release, like that to me is one where it's just like something's going on. Well, it's weird. It's weird. It's really, 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 really weird. Yeah. And unfortunately, with all these things, as if I needed to point it out, we just don't know. Mm. So we're gonna sit here with our fucking aluminium hats on, yeah. speculating about whether or not. The future queen of England or the future queen regent is dead or not? Again, I don't think it's about her being alive or dead. But it was. Well, just you more, said it. I was joking more in the the dead bit, but it was just more that like something like I mean to be honest, like again, you'd hope she's not fucking sick, right? Like, re, like, but it was just more that like in the attempt to try and make it. Something, it's weird. It's all it's, good. No, but it's weird. But but it also. But it, if I can, I'm not going to use the word still man because we don't know what it means yet. But. You're going to need to look up Steel Man Straw Man because we're going to educate ourselves on this podcast. But if I was to Steel Man an argument, yeah. again, I could be using the wrong term here. <laughs> We've heard a lot of people say it. We you would need to... Our, yeah, we, we want to bring it into, we our, want to bring it into <laughs> our lives. I hear heaps of people saying it and smart I like it. Say, it. Really and... smart people say it. Smart people say Steel Man and I want to Steel Man an argument and so that me... And even if it's wrong, I'm yeah, using yeah. it anyway. No, Steel Man it for me, bro. I'm going to Steel Man it for Go you. Off. They almost... It, also, it almost seems to me... Like they've been, they've got so desperate here that they they have resorted to using a clearly photoshopped image to try to to hail Mary this thing. Yeah, like everything. Either all that's good. the case, or the media managers are fucking idiot, idiot. Yeah, which could be true. Like, and this isn't to impugn the good work of media managers uh, across the board, but there are some fucking dead shits out there. Yeah, but you would it's think that general. if you were going to get the go the the gig at the palace, that you would have to have some fucking runs on the board. Yeah, ball. yeah, I know, but like you, they're not hiring the old dead shit from next door. Remember, surely. like some of those absolute numbskull White House press secretaries. Remember how they used to have to go out and answer questions, and you'd see them during yeah. like. Where you just have like you just see yeah. dun- you see people that are That's like true. not cut out for the fucking job. That's true. That's true. But I mean, you could argue that of just American politics generally. Sure, but well, like I mean, even just in our own political uh, sphere, like yeah, there are fucking absolute numbskulls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you you say to yourself, "Is this the best we've got?" And yeah. the answer is no, because the best we've got work for private money. Yeah, they don't want to put themselves in that situation. The People that get into politics in Australia are perns and noobs who are not very socially well adjusted. Virgins. So, <laughs> but in regards to the palace, you would think that there'd be enough cheddar there to entice some of the right quality of the right stock to prevent a bed shit like this from taking place. What have they answered the critics? They and made they, her go out. She came out and was like, she, sorry, I'm a photo. She said, oh, she's so I'm sorry, an amateur yeah. photographer. She's like, like most amateur photographers, I like to fuck around. It's like, bull shit cunt. Right. You didn't take those photos. Some palace photographer took them and then they go back to their little editing suite and they fuck with it. You didn't do it. 
Very, very interesting. I feel like there are more conspiracies kicking around at the moment than ever. Like in in our entire like just yeah, of course there is. But I, what is, I mean, obviously it's the disinformation era. But like it's not disinformation. It's that everyone can have an opinion and everyone has a voice and everyone has a platform. That's why. Yeah, but even like you people had a voice in a platform five, six, seven years ago. Like no, but now, no, but, but there's been hectic. but there's been a mistrust in in established. Media. Like media, so now people have to look elsewhere, and people, in my opinion, don't know how to fact check anything. If they see something or read something, that's it. That's fact. They don't yeah. look for a counter argument. No. So I think that's got part of that's that's definitely part of it for sure. And TikTok, people just sit on TikTok now and just boo blast Dude, my ass I, off. Again, I know you do. I I I think even today I found myself on TikTok for like longer than I've ever been on there almost in my life, mm. and. Just the shit that comes up. Like, some of the shit... I'm almost, like... I'm almost, like, blown away by some of the absolute crap that rolls through there in terms of, like, your uh, conspiracy vibe shit or just, like... You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's... The, like, things that are masquerading as legit or true and you just have no fucking... Oh, mate. You, like, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. The other one was... A, a, uh, doom, sc- a doom scroll on a Sunday after a big weekend... Good oh, lord! Yeah, you'll find yourself believing some kooky stuff. The other one was that Joe Biden, uh, the State of the Union address he gave the other day. It was not him, and it was a person wearing a mask. That's well, that's, me, though, that's Mission Impossible stuff. Well, correct. Is but that I mean, possible? Well, think about like Eddie Murphy and the Nutty Professor as an example that's really dated. But like, that's in, not dated. That's a great example. No, but like you know, you can make someone not look like himself. The Nutty Professor was so good. No, it was it was a track. But like, you where can, is Eddie Murphy now? Is he still? Is he still? He's still with us. With us, yeah. I think he's. Uh, he hasn't acted in twenty years. Am I wrong? No, you are wrong. He has done some stuff, but he's not doing much stuff. But then there was a yarn. He wanted to come back and do comedy, but then I don't know if he has done it or hasn't come back. Is he just silk pajamas type situation? Oh, he's fucking. He's feet up, but yeah, like yeah, I think yeah. he still does do some shit. Anyway, the fact that you can make him look like a big fat fuck is. But you good. can still tell it was Eddie, though. Sure, but that was like 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. All I'm listen. I don't. I don't think that uh, Mr. Biden was a man in a mask. Considering also, if you listen to him, he still was pretty stuttery and stammery. Well, yeah, the puppet. Can you Google what the Lazarus drug is? And also, just have you got Steel Man Straw Man updates? Yep, the Lazarus drug. Uh, but- Steel Man Straw Man. So a straw man is a version of an argument that no one actually believes, but is very easy to dispute. In contrast, a steel woman, others re- refer to as steel man, is the strongest version of an argument, sometimes called the principle of charity. So basically you're just making it, you're like the argument, it's like strongest steel so man. So the steel man, it is like the strongest argument yeah. that there is. And straw man's you just, if you're straw manning something that I'm saying, you're trying to make it seem feeble and flimsy and weak. Yeah, okay. Nice. Like Sweet. it. Yeah, we'll drop that. You keep your eyes, your ears peeled, punters. If I that. start still manning something, you'll know what's yeah, you up. Yeah, you fucking know about I'll it. Still man to- I'll still man Tommy Turbo every week. Oh, yeah. Big time. Can you chuck me some more of that uh, techie you got over there, buddy? We should get some more ice, I think. All right, we're back from a short intermission, and you wouldn't have noticed because it's just a cut like that. No, so no, you, you, have, you have no idea. That's the magic of editing. Uh, Joe Biden may or may not have been on a drug called... Naloxone? Naloxone. Who knows? Who knows? Listen... Truth be told, we're gonna take our we're gonna take our tinnies off. tinnies off, and we're gonna talk about something else because we don't give a shit anymore. Uh, it's always good to get a bit tinny, but I know. like getting tinny, not tinnier. No, I don't tinnies, like getting tinnier. When was the last time you got tinnier? Don't know. I'm, it's it's really it's like a public pool, you know, or a boarding house sort of uh, ailment when you're mm. sharing showers with fucking sickos and shit, right? Do you, do you need to be a, a sicko by default to, to be spreading tinny? No, you don't really. I think, but I think tinny is spread by like share, share house showers and shit like that. Do you live in a share house, Cody? I do. Is there tinny you're getting about? There's been tinny you're getting about in the house. Yeah. There you go, um, there is, right? Yeah. There but it's like nothing etch. Like you just put cream on, it goes away in a couple of days. Yeah. But there, is, never, there's, but there's tinny about. I've never put cream on tinny in my life. I've always, like in the years when you would have it, again, wouldn't have had it for fucking years, but... That you just go, well, this will go away. Tinia. Yeah, right. I don't know. Does it, does it go? I'm sure it goes well, away. Well, it has to because I've never yeah. done anything for it. Yeah. But I get psoriasis on my feet now. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You're a mess, mate. Yeah. Well, listen, it is what it is. Um, power to you. Nits, though. Nits is the other one. Uh, Evie's school. I got a fucking email today saying, oh, yeah, they've all got nits. So be on the lookout for nits. 
My mum used to... I've never had nits. Never? No, never. Really? My sister used to get nits, shout out to you enough, all the time. And by all the time, I'm obviously exaggerating. But she had nits enough times for me to remember that she had nits a lot. And mum would have to, like, you wash the hair and then you've got to go through every With fucking follicle yeah. of hair and get the eggs off. Like, yeah. it it looks like an, a rugby league nightmare. Yeah, it would be. And Evie's hair's long as fuck. It's dude. long and it's fucking thick. The only thing that you I You wouldn't have, be doing it. No, I won't be doing it. That's the thing. Like, I can't. That's not, a, that's not a you job. Well, the reason it's not a me job as well, which is nice, is that I don't know what it's like to have long hair. I don't know the ins and it's outs. It's not your world. Of like trying to, like even like brushing it. I can put it into a ponytail. Can you plait? No, nah, and I can pigtail. I could plait if I had to. I can plait, can't braid. Braiding's a, braiding's a whole different kettle of fish, my friend. <laughs> I've seen that being done. That's a fucking, you need a degree. But I could plait because I know how a plait goes. <laughs> but like we're wasting everyone's time getting me to plait because I'll fuck it up. And then you're going to, you can like, you know, even when I put in a ponytail, it's like yeah, a chick does it and like Steph does it. And it's like perfectly like back. If I do it, it's like kinked to the side or something, you know, like. Have you seen them use the the, the Dyson? I've or the, seen that before. Yeah. yeah. But see, then I don't want to suck their hair up into a vacuum cleaner. Feels, Why? Because that feels gross. Why is that gross? Well, the vacuum cleaner is hardly a bastion of cleanliness. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Sucking up shit from the ground. Let me suck all of your hair into it just so I don't have to go through the very minor rigmarole of putting a ponytail. You just got to wrap it up. But like, nits, dude, I'm not fucking with nits. Nits, it's it's... When I have a son, I'll fuck a knit, a, a knit, a human flea? Is that? I think it's probably fair to say. I think that'd be cousins, the, fl- the flea the and the knit, the flea. I wonder, actually, because, yeah, because the flea is obviously... Dude, do you remember when... And what is it about young children that they're so filthy, they're so That's foul of nature? That's what it is. Such, that such dirty little fuckers. Yeah. No offence to children. No. Big fan of your own. No, no, of course. But dirty cunts. No, no, no offense taken. That they're that they're out there getting fleas and shit. Yeah, because they're just running around. They're in the dirt. They're in the muck. They're dirty, dude. Kids are dirty as fuck. They don't care. Like they just don't. Cleanliness isn't a consideration for them. But when was the last time you heard of an adult getting f- nits? It does not happen. Well, the adults get nits when the kids get nits. You don't just get nits from rocking around. But the adult knit, you never hear about the adult knit. It's, not, it's not like someone comes into the office, they go, well, we've got knits going around. Because <laughs> Sally's a dirty bitch yeah. and it's doing <laughs> the is rounds. It, like, is it, because we, like, our girls get bathed every night. They don't wash their hair every night, but, like, they get bathed every day and they, you know, like, what is it about, like, what do you have to, is there something like, do you have to be, like, dropping the ball as a parent for your kid to just get knits? No, I think that's schoolyard stuff. Right, but someone's bringing them in. So where are they coming from? Knits don't just find their way into the area. It's not like, oh, we got a plague of nits rolling through fucking Bondi. Well, I don't know where they come from. I don't if 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 you get tackled right onto the, you're playing a bit of. Well, that's more of a guy thing. It's girls that are, are guilty of it. Is it. Are they falling out of trees? Nits. Sorry, I know I'm 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 general I'm generalizing here, but I well, don't remember the, blokes the, getting nits. Oh, dude, I got. Because you got nits. short hair. Oh, no. you got nits. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did, Did you? Yeah. Dudes I never get had nits. nits, but like long hair certainly where they like. They, they, they. Well, they got, well, they got more places to hide. Yeah, Tom. they do. They do. No, I've had nits before. That's why I was shocked you didn't. You've had nits. Have you had nits, Will? No, I've never had nits. You would have had nits growing up, Cody. I've never had yeah, it. I've had nits. You've had nits, but you yeah, got long hair. You, you can't. Yeah. Well, I had to have the treatment when you got it, but I never actually had. I don't it. remember having nits. No, I reckon. I reckon we were all. I reckon we were a knit household at some yeah, point. Yeah, Tom is right though. It just says like children just get it because like they're less aware of like being in contact with each other. And like they're just running around. For example, but the kids thing is, need to be dewormed. You got to deworm kids with those little chocolate I squares. Know. Yeah, but you only have to deworm them once they get wormed. I've never dewormed Evie or Zoe. Have but you? When was the last time you got worms? When I was a kid. That's my point. I know, but what I'm trying to understand is where are the nits coming from? Who's patient zero with fucking nits, right? And what's allowing the nit? Where does a nit exist outside of hair? Is knit is is a knit just a fucking flea? Um, there's a knit a maggot. No, it's not a maggot. Did I tell you I fucking cuz I had a this was uh, before we went to Vegas. This might have been like in January. Daddy maybe a little bit fucking grilled late night snacking. You've told me. I don't know if you told it on the podcast though. So. Went to go have a fucking thing of hummus. Grab some crackers from out of the thing in the hummus. Took another bite. Took a bite. Back in. Looked at it. 
Maggot City. Yep. <sighs> in the in the hummus? No, it was in the crackers. In, in the, the crackers. Rice, yeah. That's so fucked up. You've told me this before. I don't think you yeah. told it on the, no, the punter no, and the no, dribbler. That's fucked up. Mate, a really disturbing story. Yeah. I once ate, and I don't know if I've told this on the podcast, Easter time, a young Edward Simpson's got bunnies out the ass. The kid's happy as a pig in shit. Mm. I got me red tulip bunnies. I got my Cadbury bunnies. I got my bunnies. Yep. You're hopping. I, because I'm not of the Tom Birmingham variety, save my bunnies and I consume them over time. I don't save bunnies. I know you don't say bunnies. That's why I needed to preface that I don't have the Tommies about no, me. No, no, I'm not. And that I, I was, I was known to consume a bunny over days, not hours. How big are these bunnies? How big? Jeez. You know the big bunnies, no, the ones that well, turn. That's not that big, bro. <laughs> I know, but again, <laughs> my parents used to have to get me like those eggs, the size of a fucking. T t if you wanted that to take days, I need a, I need a monster, a football size. Anyway, this is back before I used to put chocolate in the fridge or freezer because I like it cold and I like it crispy. But I left out my egg, my, my half-eaten bunny, in my little uh, bag of Easter eggs, Tom. Would have been in my room. Anyway, went to take a bite of, let's call him Mr. Red Tulip Bunny, and then feel something in my mouth, spit it out, slug. Huge a slug. slug, dude. It's it's stayed with me my whole life. It's I me and slugs, dude. But you're lucky. You know, do you remember that kid that ate dude, the no, slug? No, I, I didn't eat the fucking thing. As, well, soon as, as soon as you taste a texture change, it's yeah. You see you later. Get out. Yeah. But that that fucking kid that ate a slug at a, he was like a Sydney boy. He was a dare. Yeah, he just as a dare ate a slug, and now he's like fucking. He's like. I'm not even sure if he's still with us. No, I think he might be. Severely, severely fucking like. Uh, he's brain dead. Well, pretty sure. I don't think he's brained it. I think he's still there, but it's like the dis the level of disability off the back of it is right. just fucking. Don't have a heap of information, but slugs no good. Don't eat slugs. There's some like there's some like rat disease on him or some shit. Couldn't find anything on this, the kid that ate the slug. What was his name? No, no, no. You were looking up the nits. I was looking up nits. Oh yes. yeah, what do you got? Uh so nits and lice are different. Uh, uh sorry, nits and fleas. Fleas jump from like uh thing host to thing, to and they they're mainly on animals and not humans. Um, and also, nits came from like uh, humans' primitive ancestors and it originated in North America. So these nits are just knocking around. They're just like there's never a shortage of hairy, dirty humans getting around. So like they're just. But do they live on us exclusively, or do they, or are they, you know, they coming up from the ground like a locust? What's the what's yeah, the go? They, yeah, yeah I think they predominantly just jump from person to person. Crazy. So that's it. So if you see a nit on your child, you know it's already jumped from somewhere else and it's it's on the move. Yeah. Well, they're people. It doesn't stop moving. No, their people are on the move. Nits, dude. Fuck. Anyway, Steph's got a... She's got a well, lot of fun ahead of her. Evie if, doesn't necessarily have nits, but, but someone at the school does. So well, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. I mean, that... Given what we know about the nit. Yeah, correct. It's been going around since an early ancestor arouse in North America, so like a homo erectus type situation. The yeah. nit's been with us... Our entire existence, you yeah. could argue. Yeah, just so bouncing. it's just it's bouncing. bouncing. What's the average life like? How long does a knit live for? An individual knit. And is a knit is it is it is it like knitting? Is it? Can we it, get a photo is of it a knit? K a K N I T a knit? No, it's N I T. Okay. And get a photo like one of those super high res like photos. So they why they drop the K? Well, maybe they didn't drop the K. I think that's reserved for knitting. Knitting. Like Just crocheting, spelling, isn't it? right? Makes you think about the K, though, doesn't it? Well, whether it's necessary. Do you like K as a letter? I don't mind it. I prefer the capital K as a letter. You don't like the, the curly K? K? Well, I don't. I never do a curly K. I just do a big and a small version of the same K. You don't curl that bitch? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Then it's just like it's just like an R with an antenna. You're not curling your K's. No, I'm not, dude. Interesting. State of the show here that we are talking about <laughs> curling K's. Uh, TV, we got a photo of a knit. Yeah, knits are up. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at these bastards. Wow. Is that a legitimate photo? Lice is spelled so L -O -U -S -E. hang on, So hang on, so hang on. Is head lice and, and knits, are they the same thing or are they different? Nah. I think they're the same. Is it true as well that, that knits like clean hair? Remember that rumor was yeah, doing the rounds when yeah, you were at school? Yeah. 
Okay, head lice so are tiny insects that live in hair. Nits are empty egg cases attached to hair that head lice hatch from. Okay. So you've got head lice and nits are just empty egg casing. There you fucking so go. empty egg casings. Yeah. So, so then, they're already like... So the hatched. lice is hatched out of it. That's yeah, disgusting. Dude, that's gross. That is absolutely foul. And do they bite you and shit? Like, is that sort of the go? Look at those little fuckers. Yeah, that's rank. I don't know if that's real or not, though. Yeah, it looks real to me, mate. That looks real. There you go. That's head lice, punters and dribblers. Yeah. Soak it up, drink it in. Soak it up, drink it in. Lifespan of nits, actually. I just want to know. Yeah. You had that on your other tab there. 30 days. 30 days. Not that long. Yeah, but for the something that small. Oh, well, fuck. We're pushing 100 years, mate. Get a, get a real fucking timeline. Get a real job, cunt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get a real mortality rate, you weak dog. <laughs> Fucking weak as piss. 30 mm. days. That's pathetic. Yeah, that is pathetic. That's an average. That's weak as piss. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, that's appalling. No, that is, it's not great. We're out here pushing. Like, some of our some of our, our species are doing 120s, 120s 130s. Well, not 130s. 124, I think it's the record, Tommy, that you find the record's 124-ish. Oh, I feel like there was one Aprox. Where, there was one where someone was trying to say they were like 130, 140. Mate, I'll tell you what it'd be. It, the problem the, is that it goes back the, to when before like burst. The thing, to the thing about living, about knocking out a serious uh, innings. Ton. Well, it's a tongue with change, yeah. Tom. No, it's a ton of consequence. Ton of consequence. Yeah. Is that, you know, the average in Australia, just work with me here and don't nitpick me. Pardon the previous topic, pun. Let's say it's 80 for a, for a human, a male in Australia. If you're getting to 100, a lot of your mates have come and gone, what sort of nick are you in? You're in awful nick. Are you, are you, are you living at home? Are you in a home? Are you, are you fucking, are you, up, are you all there upstairs? Can you still have a wank? Like, where are you at? Do you want a wank? Do you, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. think. You but do. then you hear no. But uh, but then you hear about these Bernie Ecclestons of the world. Not Bernie. You hear about these retirement homes where everyone's just fucking the house down, Tom. So I don't know what to believe anymore. Are they fucking the house down? Apparently they're going room to room. These blokes and these Sheilas. Are they still able to get loads off at that age? I'm telling you what I heard. There's Sheilas and and blokes out there going room to room, having the time of their Could lives. Could you imagine working in an old folks' home and work, walking in on two fucking ghosts getting after it? Like, I'm of the be... opinion. Where I've been told that the people in retirement homes, etc., nursing homes, are in rabbit territory. I wonder whether they have the uh, sort of the fluidity of movement to alt to do like positional switches, or if it's just a let's get down, let's get dirty, very lazy. Let's doggy. get down, let's get down, down to, to business. business. Yeah. Or is it like riding a bike? For example, Tom, if you were out there. Plowing a field for fifty years, mm. for example, and you became efficient at it, and you and you knew what worked, and you knew what didn't, and you knew what would uh, guarantee high yields. Right. Yeah. You're not going to forget that, even if you're a bit old. Well, no, it's not necessarily about forgetting how to get the job done, but potentially no longer being able to drag the plow, as it were. <laughs> I just – what would be funny is – But there is, how, there is assistance. But you know how they um, – no, I don't even think it's about getting hard. I'm more like, can you pull off the pile driver at 80? Can you, well, no, can you, you don't, snap you don't, the legs behind you the you head? You don't move as well as you used to. No, you don't. That's no. what I'm saying. No, you but don't want then, to throw a hip out. But then, Unless you've got a fake one, then you're probably good to you're go. You're probably good to go, right? you probably spin that thing 360. I'm just trying to work out like whether – you know when – Do you reckon they're hitting it from behind? I feel like that would almost be the easiest way to do it. Or lazy doggy. You get into a fucking... You get lazy doggy is not the same. As what? Hitting it from behind? Yeah. No, it's not. Well, it, it's lazy. I mean, I'm talking... Yeah, it's lazy. It's lazy. I'm saying, no, you, get, you stand up. Do you, reckon, you, do you, reckon, do you reckon the old boy's still like a spank? I mean, do you reckon there's spanking going on? Well, it's not about whether the old boy likes it, because I think the old boy will always like a spank. <laughs> I don't think that you lose that. Well, I'm just saying. Do you do you think? That, I think that do the you old think that girl even might if, be over you, it. Well, do you think even at 90, you know, in your final years, and and you know, Beth from next door, looking for a for you a, might fucking leave a handprint on Beth that fucking sits there for but, a week. But well, Betty, do, but does Betty like a spank still? I think that you. I don't know. I'd actually like to ask. I'd like it to be nice to sit down with a couple of oldies and ask them about fucking. And I'm serious. Because I think, I think growing up, 
not that I ever stopped to excavate my thoughts properly, but I think that there was an underlying assumption running through m- me generally that old people stop fucking. Yeah. I've revised that. Opinion. Well, you've had to. You've had to, I've, you've had to. Well, well, weight of runs. But also, you're not married to not your weight beliefs, of runs, right? as in weight, of, weight of evidence. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, can you? And I don't know what you're going to have to Google here, uh, Cody. Your search history is going to be a little bit sullied here. But like, do old guys like how? how do old men still wank? And do they get nuts off? Or do your balls stop working? No, they get nuts working? off, dude. How do you know? Because that Formula One guy was 90 and he had a child. Bernie Eccleston. Bernie Eccleston. Is he still with us? I, I think so. Fucking Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. They both just fathered children who I believe their wives just left them. So so you basically, you you don't you can, stop no, producing the keeps going. Nut. Theo Vaughan had a really great thing where he said his father was so old, he said he was the last sperm in his dad's balls and he had to like close all the windows before he left. <laughs> <laughs> Sweep up everything. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I'll come back to the um, the old guys, but uh, in up. terms of just like elderly people uh, having sex, uh, based on a study in the US of people aged 75 to 85, 54% reported having sex two or three times per month and 23% reported having sex one or more times per week. So yes. So a quarter of fucking every week and 50% of fucking two to three times a and month. And how, how old are these Dirty old five. Oh, these are 85. sixty and over. Sixty and over. But yeah, this. Sixty to this, seventy. Didn't you I think say seventy five? Yeah, to sorry. This. Uh, yeah, this report in particular was seventy five to eighty five. So this was just like a case study. <laughs> Listen, that's a, you. See, you see what I'm saying? But the they're funny, out there. I know. The funny thing is, though, like when they're I fucking more than any of us. Yeah. Oh fuck. But like when I think about my grandparents when I was young, my grandparents were old people. Like, they dressed old, they yep. sat in armchairs in their house, their house was old as well, fuck. Well, there's nothing wrong with sitting in an armchair. No, no, no. I'm not here to impugn the fine Doesn't mean you don't like getting on the job. Listen, listen to me. What I'm saying is the idea of Nano and Bruce... Great place to get bloody your box eaten with your... <laughs> With While your legs you're watching up. Midsummer Murders, <laughs> yeah, in the Lazy Boy with the fucking legs up, Pete's over the top. Midsummer yeah. Murders on. Yeah. What are we talking? Yeah, you're about? right. Poirot's fucking <laughs> yeah, on Poirot. while you're getting your yeah. box eaten. <laughs> Poirot, <laughs> fuck getting yeah, sucked off to yeah. Poirot. Yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. But what I'm saying is the idea, and I, um, the idea of of my grandparents. They were. Well, it's unimaginable. No, but they were old people. They dressed like old people. Whereas my parents are approaching their age that, like, so my granddad passed away when he was 73. Yes. Right? Yep. My parents are approaching. Is my dad. Is dad 70 this year or last year? Dad's 70. Mum's fucking not that far. Like, they don't dress, look, act. Yeah, but your dad's not. Dad's not a... He's not a great example. Sure, sure. Dad's not. <laughs> you know what you're I right. mean? You're right. Dad's not. But like, no, you're right. Dad's not. I have a little bit of a warped perception of maybe what an adult grandfather Yeah, there's age, not many There's not many blokes that age like your old man. No, but even just like the general doddery nature of them. You know what I mean? I think there's less doddering. Yeah. I, I, just think, like I, I No, I agree with that. 70 is not as old as 70 was. Like it might still be, but not in the way that like 70 year olds behave. I, I completely agree. But what I'm trying to say is just to, to come back to my original point is that I've been led to believe based on nothing more than whispers and hearsay mm. that people in nursing homes and retirement homes, which implies to me, indicates to me that they need assistance from time to time to live like like yeah. you know assisted showering yeah, and yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, the yeah. bum hole wiped i was under the impression that those people also liked slipping into each other's rooms for a bit of a and then slipping into each other but that's what i was of the opinion was happening and it's been substantiated by cody's case study in the u.s where 70 25 percent of 75 to 85 year olds were fucking once a week which again what's the whole like boner meds for like, I know that there's, like, people, like, they're just, like, you could be any age and have an issue with boners, shout out to Pilot. But, like, what's the – how are you getting your dick hard at 70? Or is it just, like, it's just kind of – that can still happen. I that, think I think it can still happen. Plum and – well, like, and obviously it does. But, like, for, for that many people to just be out there or work? Or they, or they know, Tom, or they know that there's, there's good fishing. 
right. going on, yeah, and right. they bring the right bait. Well, they go to the tackle store. They before. go to the tackle store because they they know the fish are biting. Yeah, right. And they want to get a fucking. They want to reel a couple in, so it's they go dusk, to the tackle. It's dusk in the nursing home. Tide's coming in. Fucking yeah. oath. So they nip down the tackle store and they go, "Give us some of your best worm, i.e., <laughs> blue pill, blue pill." And they go out there and they get a couple biting. Couple of flathead. Couple of flatties. Couple of flatties. Fucking oath. I, yeah. So apparently, like generally, like your libido and stuff just starts to decline. Um, it peaks in your twenties and then just naturally declines That's over your name. life. But like, yeah, isn't uh, women's like thirty. Women's is about thirty, I think. Yeah, but in uh, elderly people, like a lot of their libido and their sexual drive is related to how healthy they are, both mentally and physically. So if people are like quite physically healthy, they're naturally going to have the energy a bit more to sort of like that. That's yeah. good stuff. Yeah, it is. I felt there was a period I reckon, like some, in your twenties. It's funny only at being outside of your twenties. And like, especially your early 20s, when you're there, you just think like the amount you fuck. And I don't mean even in the sense of like, oh, picking up heaps. I just mean like generally your your uh, appetite for it. You just think it's normal. And then you get out of it, you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, oh, Well, the appetite was twice daily, you know what I mean? The appetite was like, it does I'm not ready to exist anymore. You know what I mean? The, 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 the tour days, you know. That's just a thing of the absolute. Two a day. Oh, that's a part. That's that's. Yeah, that's, but you'd lay in bed all day with fuck all the do as exactly, well. You know what I mean? What There's nothing is. else that's, going on. That's more you're almost what it is. bored. Yeah, you're like <laughs> oh, I may like, as well have a root. Yeah, I may as well pass the time. Like this thing, I can sort of. I guess I can fold it. In. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> the folding stuff. No, you can fold. But then I remember when I got like to my late twenties, feeling like a nah, I can't be fucked. But then I've actually almost feel like I've had a comeback. Good for you, buddy. Well, that's not what I was asking for. It was more, I don't want you to, like, pat me on the back for it. I don't want you to... What a mate can't pat a mate on the back? For what, being... (laughs) For for, for, for not... For (laughs) for bringing back the folding stuff? A mate can't pat a mate on the back for fucking bringing back an old classic? (laughs) Shout out to the folding stuff. Tried and tested. Sounds like a Domino's order. Yeah, it does. Yeah, just... just, Get your uh, Domino's folding stuff with your code (laughs) folding stuff. I miss those Domino's commercials, all those Domino's, and this isn't an ad pun as a dribblers. I'm no. using, I'm, I'm reflecting, I'm getting nostalgic, if you don't mind. Where every week Domino's would come out with something more outrageous. It started with cheese in the crust. Well, I think, then they pizza started general, putting hot dogs hut and shit that? in there, dude. The hot dogs in the crust is a... Is a you remember when we all as a people moved away from deep pan, which was the thickest of all pizzas? Yeah, cheesy crust, deep pan and shit. They, and then they, they brought in light and crispy? Or thin light, and crispy. Thin and crispy. That was a game changer, but yeah. you could argue too thin and too crispy. Yeah, but now then you we've just settled, classic crust. But that came in afterwards, yeah, no, to didn't. my memory. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it might have. Now we are just a classic. Like, if you were to order now a deep pan, you are a, you're a sick bit fuck. of a sicker. Yeah, no, you're, you're a sick fuck. Do you remember when we were at school in the boarding house? The, like, the special? Yeah, the 10 bucks. 10 bucks for a 1.25 litre Coke and a large, and a, pizza. And a large pizza. And so you'd... But, but you'd, you'd, you'd have to get, get two, two, so it's so you 20 bucks. To find, you needed to find your You mate. needed to find a mate. Yeah. You needed to find Dude, a pal. The scrounging for... Was that every weekend? Was that every day? Dude, every day. Was no, every, you you could, any day, any day you want. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We used to pound that in the. One point two five liter Coke or lemonade, Sprite. I'm a Sprite. And guy. a fucking large pizza to yourself is God's work for ten, ten bucks. bucks. And you would just you'd go around and you'd scrounge your coins because and, and you get it and you get it. You, you could get a one point two five liter Coke, a large pizza, and a pack of fucking uh, Peter Stuyvesant Blues for twenty bucks with a twenty. Yeah. Those you were, could. You could. A soft pack. A softy. You remember the softies? So, dude, the soft packs were so good. God damn it. With all the branding on the yeah, front. Makes it, listen, it's making us sound old as shit. It is making us sound old as shit, but soft packs, branded cigarettes, $10 fucking pizza with a 1.25 <laughs> litre fucking Coke or a Sprite. Thanks for coming. Thanks all for while you were in high school. Thanks for coming. All while you were a 15, well, I had 50 16-year-old bu- boarder. I had 50 bucks a week, so I had to spend it wisely, and I just spilled a drink all down my front. That's how you spent it. That's how I spent it. That's how I spent it. But see, but it was also like there was someone every single night knocking about, looking for change. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, didn't necessarily have a tenner laying around. You no. had to go digging. You had to go digging. You might have like four bucks. You had to go your, your golf. You never home. had ten, Tom. No, you had to go and... You didn't have crisp tens no. ironed sitting in your fucking locker. But you might not have even had ten in coins. Like, you have to go and... You, you'd you have to go and find... Beg, borrow, and steal. Yeah, yeah. Well, cap raise. Cap raise. Yeah. Yeah. Go out and look for some seed investment. That's all it was. Some angel investment. Might give you a slice. Yeah. Well. Might. Depends if you're a year older than me or you're younger than me. Yeah, it depends who you are. If I'm going to get bashed, you can have You some. can have a slice. If you're younger than me... <laughs> fuck off. It's probably just a generous donation. Correct. Punters and dribbles, quickly before we go on, just want to let you know that we have... Uh, we've got a bit of a, a, a rosé offering. It's a very limited one. Party um, pack. It's a party pack. There's some a couple of magnums left over, those big, beautiful magnums. And uh, obviously, we've still got some rosé kicking, so we've put together a party pack. That is going to get you four six-packs of Big Day Rosé, and then you're going to get a free magnum, and you're going to get $50 off your entire order and free shipping. So go to hellosport.shop. Party pack. Party pack. Four six-packs of rosé. You're going to get one magnum for free, 50 bucks off your total order, Free shipping, smart decision sort of stuff. Now, whether the, whether you're a big rose guy or girl, and you want to go in on that yourself, or whether you got a party coming up, or whether you got you and a couple of mates who fucking fiend rose, and you want to all chip in together, there are options here. There are beautiful, glorious, incredible options. We found some magnums under the stairs, so to speak, and our offer to you is bundling this bitch up, the party pack. If you got a rip, if you got a tear coming up, this is for you. Get into it. Hello, sport.shop. Punters and dribblers, I was in the car the other day and I was listening to the radio and it and they were talking about how one of the candidates, I believe from the Liberal Party, who's either going for election or he's going for re-election in Tasmania in the state government has promised that if he wins, he promises to build the world's biggest chocolate fountain in Tasmania. And it just made me think, what a what a great state it must be to live in, whereby you are so carefree and backwards that Mo- the thing that moves the needle politically is whether you will or will not build a chocolate fountain. <laughs> <laughs> I like, is this going to be a fountain that, like, we and like, I'm speaking as a Tasmanian here who's not a Tasmanian, but, like, if we the Tasmanians, am I be able to drink from this thing? Can I walk up there with like a cup or is this going to be like a monument? Is this well, like a monument you're, you're asking thing? if it's a community, community play. Yeah. Like, fill up your bottle. Yeah, sort like, of come stuff. fill up your cup with some chalky fondue. Is this a fondue thing? Because I wouldn't trust people around a chocolate fountain. I, I, I think it might be somehow tied into the Cabri factory that's down there. So you know the chocolate's good. You know it's going to be rigid, dish. But I would be of the opinion that if the taxpayer, the state taxpayer paying for such a fountain, Tom, I would like it to be a bubbler type setup where I can either go and I can... I wouldn't give you you wouldn't give your dog any because the chocolate... Well, chocolate, chocolate is good for dogs. But I, w- I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be against the idea of... You know, bending over, hitting the bubbler, and a and a, a stream of Cadbury chocolate coming out. Maybe fill up a couple of uh, growlers, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of couple of fucking uh, growlers of chocolate. They're just like liquid chocolate. Well, the growler is what the lefty uses to fill it fill up, up with uh, apricot beer. Is that not? Well, correct? I would argue, and I don't want to look over and ask yet, but I would bet some significant money that our new Dior-looking Dior yeah. has a couple of growls at home where he goes to like a local brewery. And it looks like a growler, people. I'm actually not. I'm actually not. I live but you know what a growler is. People I've worked in, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I've worked you in a pub. Like, Do you live with anyone with a growler? No, no, no. Bullshit. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all too, we're all too lazy for that and poor. We just buy tinnies. I thought the growler was almost like a more... Uh, fiscally responsible approach. How would it be though? Because boutique, like boutique, was not. What's well, it, as in, like you just you don't have to the, worry about. You just go and fill up your own thing up. What, the word's not boutique. It's uh, craft. Craft. Craft yeah. beer is expensive. Yeah, you're right. It is. I guess maybe it was more like um, you're saving on packaging because you're bringing your own, like a keep cup. You know, I don't know. Like you don't get a discount for a keep cup, though, do you? No, you don't. Wonder if you sh- you should probably shouldn't you? 
Yeah, but the but the you know they cost fucking a cent getting mm. those yeah. those. What about cans? What do cans cost? That would they fuck all. They well, Willie might know actually. No idea how much can okay, costs. Good. Okay, yeah. great. Now uh, have we got this article up? I can't see it. Oh god, this fucking HDMI. Well, just play your role, mate. Well, listen, don't don't attack me. <laughs> so. Pure, Pure imagination. imagination. Tasmania Premier vows to build world's largest chocolate fountain if re-elected. So okay, so it's re-election. Liberal, liberal Jeremy Rockcliffe commits 12 million. Oh, my God. And says chocolate experience at Claremont would be the greatest thing to happen to tourism since Mona. Like, that's what's happening down in Tassie. Mona, the museum of old and new art, built by a guy who is... Not Rain Man, but has Rain Man qualities. And not Voldemort Rain Man. No, as in, uh, f- is it Philip, Se- Philip Seymour Hoffman? Is that his no, name? No, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Dust- Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man type qualities, card, card, card counting type you've, qualities. You've absolutely nailed that. Can I just read the start of this article here? Yes, you can. Dubai is home to the world's tallest skyscraper, Bujuri Khalifa. Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa. Sorry, can't read. Actually, that's a hard word in my defense. Burj. Uh, Burj Khalifa. Nepal boasts Mount Everest. Soon, if Jeremy Rockcliffe gets his way, Tasmania could be home to the world's largest chocolate fountain. That is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. $12 million for a chocolate fountain. Now, I get it. I'm a chocolate guy. I'm like on team chocolate. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're a chocolate guy. If it came to like, you know, if there was like a, a factional sort of like gang war, I'm on team chocolate. I'm punching on for chocolate. So yeah, sweet and savory. Your your team sweet. Um, t- but and this specifically is specifically team chocolate. Team. Cho- this is the dumbest. Twelve million dollars. The Tasmania Premier on Sunday appeared to take inspiration from Willy Wonka. By pitching himself to voters as the dreamer of dreams. Oh my God, dude. During a visit to the Cadbury Chocolate Factory, the largest in the Southern Hemisphere near Hobart. So the largest chocolate factory in the Southern Hemisphere is near Hobart, the Cadbury Chocolate Factory. But he wants to build the world's largest chocolate found. Think, listen They've already got the largest chocolate factory. Listen to this. Channeling his inner Wonka. Rockcliffe said if re-elected, his Liberal government would deliver the greatest thing to happen to tourism since Mona. What could rival the Museum of Old and New Art? Question mark. The world's largest chocolate fountain, which would, quote, rewrite the must-see list for every visitor that comes to Tasmania, the Premier enthused. If you can't drink from this fucking thing, yeah, it's all for nothing. It's for nothing. And the chocolate experience, there's I don't I can't put my finger on what's uncomfortable about the chocolate experience. There's just something about it that doesn't sit right with me. It sounds kind of gross. The new chocolate experience would include a chocolate fountain doesn't say whether or not that will have access to a bubbler type system, yeah. a premium chocolate studio, a chocolate lab with a, with make your own chocolate bar, a chocolate emporium, a cafe, a playground, and so much more. The premier said, twelve million. Okay, but like twelve. How big's this fucking? Yeah, thing? and it like, but like, what's what's so much more than like than a chocolate fountain, premium chocolate studio, a chocolate lab, assuming not the dog, make your own chocolate bar, and a chocolate emporium, cafe, playground. Like, what's so much more? Can you look up the average launch cost of like a Falcon rocket from SpaceX? Do you know what I mean? Like, where where's this chocolate? Where's this? Could this? Where's could, the chocolate fountain in with in, with rockets? With like getting getting us to sort of Mars, terraforming Mars. Or to Falcon the moon. Nine, cost per launch sixty seven million. So you can get that's. So what is it? Five about five chocolate fountains just to to, to get to to space. That's that's a. It's actually a very great way of trying to uh, understand the the expenditure here, and it's a great contextualizer. So like. Whilst I can see there is some sort of diabetic appeal to the <laughs> chocolate fountain, <laughs> the fact that only five of them will get you to fucking space. <laughs> Not just get you to space, but like, the Falcon 9's taking people to the fucking space station. Yeah, no, no, like, that's it. You're, 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 it's space tourism we're talking <laughs> about. Like, 
And yeah, while well, yeah, or you could go to Tasmania <laughs> and hop into a chocolate lab and then hop on the playground and make your own chocolate make your own bar. chocolate. Yeah, and what's that going to cost you? Two hundred million chocolate bars are produced right here at Cadbury's Claremont and uh, Claremont, employing some four hundred fifty Tasmanians. We want to build on that. Add value, Rockcliffe said. You can imagine some glass windows looking out over the beautiful waters and you, would as, you, and you would experience as you come through here the new building. The world's largest chocolate fountain, for example. A chocolate lap. What, he's just repeating himself. <laughs> I know. What's going on here? An opportunity where Tasmanians can make their own Tasmanian <laughs> chocolate with Tasmanian ingredients. This is unbelievable. This guy looks like he's covered himself <laughs> in chocolate for the photo. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ! He looks like a milky top. He does. You know the chocolate? Yeah, the top deck. The top deck. He looks like a top deck. Wow. Again, public record. I'm a big fan of Tasmania. I got married down there. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. But this is unbelievable. Now this is if this is if this is what he's leading with going into an election. This is his leading. Well, he's hanging his hat on it. He's hanging his hat on it. He's like on the bill. This is this is essentially the Tasmanian people yeah. are asked to vote on one thing and one thing only. Are you pro chocolate fan or are you against it? Hold on a second. Adding to the sense of wonder, he said. Rockliffe, uh, he said a returned go uh, a returned Rockliffe government would kick in twelve million to make the chocolate experience a reality, including. Two million to help with design and planning. Another two million for early site work, and then eight million for unspecified activities and great milestones. Now, is that saying that is how the twelve breaks down, or is that on top of? I think that's how he's saying the twelve breaks down. I'm interested to know why you need two million dollars to uh, get foundations in place for a chocolate fountain of that size. If you're spending two million dollars on foundations, it's got to be fucking massive. They've spent okay, 15 I, years of yeah, research. Yeah, yeah. Listen to this positive. This, it gets, it, this, this article it just gets better and According better. According to Current, the project, the result of 15 years of research and collaboration in conjunction with Cadbury, would cost $100 million and bring, <laughs> and in quotes, bring a world of chocolate delights, wonder, and excitement to the Apple Isle. So is it... 12 million or 100 million? No, no, they're kicking in 12. It's costing 100. Jesus, so we could get to fucking <laughs> twice. <space>. Twice. <laughs> the Guinness World Record says the world's tallest chocolate fountain is owned by Austrian chocolatiers. Uh, don't, I can't Con be bothered. Fizier, Wenschitz. Oh, Wenz, uh, v, Vinschitz. Wayne Hur Wayne Hist. Again. No, it's a V if it's a W, isn't it? Van, I don't fucking know, dude. Van Heist. Speak. It opened in 20 2019. The chocolate waterfall stands at 12.27 metres. That's actually pretty fucking big. That is big. I was going to shit on it, but that's actually big. With a thousand kilometres. Oh, sorry. Kilograms. <laughs> a thousand kilograms of liquid chocolate cascading down its panels over what time frame? Uh, <laughs> well, is that any per one second? Point. I'd say at any one point. Okay. That's a lot, though. It's a thousand kilos. That's a ton. Oh, there's a lot you can do with this, though. You could line up a panel of fucking fatties, right? And you're just scooping out chocolate and see how many scoops you can get through. Well, like but the hot, yeah, but like like the what, hot dog that, eating chocolate. But is that the attraction? <laughs> Watching like, fatties get... consume it. It would be, it, you know, like it's like you eating... you there's things you could do. You could put on a fatties contest. You could do a belly flop contest into, into chocolate. chocolate? Yeah. No, then you're sullying the... the, the well, just, it recycles. Yeah, but like, does it? Or is it is it is it sort of recycling? So you okay, like okay, okay. Let's just get fair income for one second. If someone says to you, the premier, whatever his name is in Tasmania, come down and see the chocolate fountain. I don't give a shit. If you tell me there's big fatties down there doing belly flop comps into it, mm. doing like how many how many ladles can you eat a second? I'm probably down there. Well, I'm certainly going to check it out. Like you could get KO involved. That thing that's you'd live stream that. No, you'd live stream that. Tasmania's best go toe to toe. Here we go. It's unclear whether the public would be able to taste Tasmania's proposed chocolate fountain or what sort of food safety regulations the proposal would have to meet. Well, here, here's the answer, Mr. Rockcliffe and Tasmanian chocolate industry. If I can't taste it, swim in it. If I can't get down there with a fucking growler <laughs> that I've borrowed off fucking Cody and fill it up with chocolate, then this thing's a waste. Send me to space. 
Wasted time. Yeah. Send me to space. Wasted time. A hundred million dollars is going to cost, and you're going to kick in 12. And I can't even swim in I it. I can't even fucking swim in it. <laughs> I can't even see Fatty's belly flop into this shit. Yeah. I'd like to see Fatty's doing backstroke in chocolate. Yeah. The chocolate cup. Whereas the Labor Party, boo. They've announced a $50 million no interest loans program that would be eligible for operators to visit a con... Uh, in the visitor's economy to apply. Nah. To, uh, nah. 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 Sorry. Nah. We need cold out cash we for need, the factory. We need chocolate, dude. Boo. Chocolate fountain. So this yeah. is the this is the counter, I believe, by the labor the labor leader. That twelve million is a huge amount of money when you think about the ways you could be spending areas that are absolutely screaming out for government support <laughs> and are actually government responsibilities, Webb said. It's just virtue signaling, is it? It's not virtue <laughs> signaling. <laughs> Is it? Uh, it's not virtue signaling. I don't think it's. I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> it's not. It's a. Ch it's chocolate. It's it's fatty signaling. <laughs> fatty yeah, signaling. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Tasmania will head to the polls a year before an election was due after Australia's last remaining Liberal Premier Rockcliffe called an early election for 23rd of March. Keep your fucking eyes peeled, punters and jubblers. Ten days away. Yeah, where listen, we're we're a, we're a state. Goes to the polls to decide yay or nay yeah. to the world's ch largest chocolate fan. Which, which, like, which obviously now we're going to have to cover. If they build it, we're down there. With for the opening. Oh, yes, cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, down there yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, Eddie, Don is in the dribblers. Um, I was just, uh... Having a bracky with the and kisses at uh, the famous Quiddy Beach, and I was actually uh, sitting next to um, the famous uh, Anthony Seabold. Now, he was sitting with a gentleman I did not know, but they were talking coaching tactics. Now, because I am an avid, uh, avid uh, Rooster supporter, other chooks. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I've recorded their whole conversation and I'm sending it to Trent Robinson as we speak. I'll see you boys on Sunday. Good luck. You'll meet a fuckhead. Shooks forever. Manly never. See you soon. Is that a threat? Yeah, that sounded like a threat. That sounded like a threat. What I'd say to, to this fucking idiot is that Seabold is a cerebral coach. Cerebral, they call him. And he probably knew. Clever. He probably knew that you were recording him and he was probably fucking hoodwinking you. Well, the, False flags. Listen, the dribbler not as wily, not as Cerebral. subtle no. as they like to think. Yeah. And I just get the heavy inclination to think that the dribbler here has probably just got his phone out next to Seabold's face and Seabold doesn't Doesn't notice. notice. I think he did, man. Um, of course he did. And what? Oh, hey, hey, I'm just going to sit here and just talk about our entire game plan at a cafe while there's big dumb dribblers hanging around. Also, do you think I believe that you know Trent Robertson yeah. and you have access to him? Yeah. Also, do you think that we give a fuck? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you know what Manly do? Let's just say that you, sir, of dumb dribbler fame, have successfully recorded Seabold trade secrets, sent him to Trent Robinson if he opens your email. And then the Roosters rework their entire fucking game plan around a, a voice recording they got from a guy whose name has escaped me. <laughs> Did he give us that name? He might not have. I don't know. But you don't think Manly have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D and a plan E? Yeah, but our plan, plan, a, but a. Our plan A beats you. Of course Give the ball to does. Tommy, kick you to death through DCE, short balls off the hip from fucking Luke Brooks, uh, our boy Burbo, yeah. Ola Kawatu steamrolls close to the Hard line. running, and hard And the boys running, chuck nut up tackling. front. And then, and then the dog, Nathan Brown, comes on and woof, tears you apart. That's it. And that's he, a game and, plan. And, and Nathan hates you because you guys let him go. You treated him poorly because that's all the Roosters do. Roosters' track record of treating players like absolute dog shit precedes them. Uh, put it this way, club legend... Uh, premiership, premiership winning, winner. premiership winning captain, an ornament to the game. Boyd Cordner forced to catch economy to the US. You tell me, you fucking look after your own, do you? Yeah. Disgraceful. Mitchell Pierce, premiership winning halfback, bled for the club, and then what happens? Oh, we're gonna buy Cooper Cronk and just fucking see you, Mitch. Beat it. See ya. 
beat it. See you, Mitch. Yeah. You guys are a fucking disgrace. That, that Roosters family bullshit you roll out is yeah. a myth and nothing more than that. Roosters are a fucking disgrace. Absolute disgrace. Do like Teddy. Teddy was a nice guy. I met Teddy. Teddy's a nice guy. Like all your players. No, like no, all your players, players are really cool. The club, though, are disgrace. Cheese, great friend of ours. Great guy. Connor Watson, great guy. Great guy. Jesse Crichton, Crichton, great, guy. great guy. Love your players. Just just talking about Roosters. Just absolute generally. disgrace of a club. Correct. And, and you too, sir. You're a fucking disgrace. Fuck you. Well put. G'day boys, uh, it's a Pudos Dribbler here. This is on the back of the uh, pressure washer chat that Eddie was chatting about in the latest episode. Uh, made me think back to a couple of years ago. I was uh, working and living abroad, living in England, and um, got a job as a groundskeeper at this older bird's place. And uh, long story short, she asked me to fucking go pressure wash around the front of her house, all the fucking tiles and shit like that. And she had a bit of coin, so she had a fucking mean pressure washer. One of those, like, big diesel cunts that fucking, like, you could, if you stood there long enough, you'd blow a hole in a timber fence sort of stuff. <laughs> and uh, she's got me to do all the tiles out the front of her house. So she went out for the day. I ripped it and did that. And then I had a bit of time left over. I got really stuck in my pressure washing work. So I thought, oh, I'll go and fucking blast those gargoyles near the side of her door. So I started pressure washing all the moss and shit off those. And the fucking pressure washers at high power, like they're fucking blowing chips and shit off it. The gargoyles are losing spikes and chips in their ears and shit like that. I thought, oh, fuck, but kept at it, got them squeaky clean, got all the moss off and was pretty stoked. Anyway, um, the next morning I got fired and um, wasn't really sure why. I was like, oh, fucking... Anyway, long story short, apparently those gargoyles had been in her family for three generations or whatever and had taken something like 60 years to grow this particular type of slow-growing moss on these gargoyles, and it was only the last year or two oh. that that actually started to get to where she wanted them and where her mum had wanted them. So I've been in this, like, family heirloom, and um, okay. trigger-happy me with a fucking pressure washer just ruined the cunt six years' worth of work. So, you know, I thought it was pretty funny. I thought you boys have a good one, guys. Cheers. Listen, I would say... You, you needed more information from that family. 1,000%. 1,000%. If you are growing a 60-year-old moss on a couple of gargoyles out the front... That are three generations old. And and I've got a young whippersnapper around to do a bit of high-pressure cleaning of tiles, I'm bagging those things. Or I'm going, hey... I'm bagging do them. Do not go near the fucking gargoyles. We've just got this... Also, I don't know, again, like, not a big moss grower... An intentional moss grower. Does moss take sixty years to grow? I don't know. How do you know you're not a moss grower? I, I don't. But it's you not a moss grower. Yeah, but it seems like something where moss moss doesn't seem like something that's hard to grow. So I'm just already calling bullshit on the family. I'm in defense of this gentleman. Right. They didn't give you any notice. Like, how much do you care about the moss or the gargoyles, and you don't even bring it up to me? But but you could think about it differently. Yeah, I mean the fact that it hasn't been brought up is absolutely disgraceful. In terms of, I don't think it takes moss sixty years to grow. I think they've been trying to grow it for sixty years, and it's just never taken. And then finally, they've found the secret recipe to get this moss to to grow in these bitches, and he's blasted it off and fucked up the gargoyles a bit. Well, he was taking chips, which he didn't seem too concerned no, about. No, he didn't even seem to think that that was a big deal. I'm like, well, yeah, if you his spikes, he's like, who cares? They were clean. Listen, there was some, there was some, there was some, uh, some frivolous behaviour from this gentleman, but also he wasn't given the tools for success. But also, given that he was out there chipping these things and shit, did he was he listening? That's a good point. Listen, I don't know how to feel about this. I think everyone's at fault. If he's got, but if he's got a, di a diesel powered high pressure hose, he's he's. Blasting. No, that's true. Diesel powered. You're, all, you're, all, that like that's like the one on the back of the truck. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that thing. That trucks thing will fuck you up. They take your toe off. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm. Blast out through your foot sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's go. G'day, g'day. Tom, Eddie, the punter, and the dribbler. Tinfoil dribbler here, and something pretty big's just come across my desk I think you boys should take a look at. So strap in and get your tinfoil hats out. This is going to be one hell of a ride. All right, so remember a few years ago when the Tigers would always finish ninth? They were bloody good times, absolute time of my life personally. But last time they finished ninth was 2019, and we all know what happened in 2020. The world went to absolute shit. COVID, lockdowns, World War Three almost kicked off multiple times. Panthers started their dynasty. 
Turbo's injury curse and the Manly Pride jersey saga, which are some of the shit things that happened after 2020. Is it a coincidence that this all started after the Tigers free fell from their rightful position at night? I don't think so. But let's bring it back to the present day. How about now? After round one, Tigers are ninth place. Rugby league is dominating the AFL. Manly are once again the greatest team in the comp. Benji's back at the Tigers. League went to frickin' Vegas. I mean, come on. The omens are there. The writing's on the wall. Tigers have to be ninth for all to be right in the world. Anyway, what do you boys think? Manly forever, Tigers anywhere but ninth never. Listen, the guy's clearly done his research. That's a well-researched dribbler right there. It's an incredibly well-researched dribbler. Yeah, that's, that's, like a bit that, of librarian about the kid. Annotated sort of bibliography sort of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got a bibliography of notes. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. quite, you know. No, no, he's, he's referenced out the arse. Yes, yeah, that thing's very you put, well referenced. You put that through, pass it in, and it's 100% Turn pass. it in, but yeah, no, that thing that thing goes straight through, turn it in with flying colours. I don't... <laughs> I don't really care about the Tigers at all. Like, I mean, if they 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 just can't be above nine. Well, I think what he's saying is the world's right and calm and balanced and measured when the Tigers are coming ninth. I agree with that. I would also say this, though, young librarian. I like the Tigers coming last. Same. Sorry, Tigers. You know, I'm prepared to go fuck balance, fuck order. Mm. Give me some chaos. Give me some chaos. Give me COVID if it means that the Tigers are coming last. You know what I mean? Like, that might sound a bit sinister, a bit evil to get everyone to lock down again. Maybe I'm not going that far. But what I am saying is I'm prepared to wear a little bit of chaos. Like a global pandemic if it means that the Tigers are coming last. That's what I'm saying. You know, I'm not against a, a GP if it means yeah, yeah. the, the WT pandy. are getting fucking butt fucked by a spoon. Because there's something about the Tigers being god awful that. Unites us all. Yeah, I feel like we can all get behind that. Other than Tigers. tigers, tigers yeah, but even... So, I think it's made us closer with Cody. I'd say that. I'd say we've been able to bond over the fact your team sucks. Sure. You know, it's like, it's been nice, I think. Don't <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah. I think it's I, been nice. Yeah, it's been good. It's yeah. been good. Yeah. It's been an easier in, you know, for you. Oh, I'm Cody. I go for the Tigers. Yeah. My team sucks. Yeah, I'm a bottom. What would be the wor- What would have been the worst team for me to go for? Uh, Dragon. Roosters. Uh, Roosters, yeah, but Roosters are almost like so obvious. Well, I'm talking about me personally and my annoyance. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just trying to think about like... Like if I was coming in here getting lippy about a team, Para maybe? Para probably. Para's not great. Para would have been annoying. Para, really annoying. Dragons aren't that good, but if they were good... Like any team's bad if they're, if they're good. You know what I mean? Like if you're going for a team that's good... Para like, probably. Like Dave, it was pretty fucking annoying with Dave in the Storm. Yeah, but they've always been good. Yeah. Like, Para, if you were with us when Para made the final, that would have been yeah, that so been, annoying. That would have been hard to take. Thank you, librarian. Annotated. Annotated? Annotated bibliography guy. One more. One more. The last hurrah. Hey, boys. Just the humble Garbo dribbler here. Up before the birds, picking them up and putting them down, boys. Now, as I sit here and ponder and think, I think about... The trucking nut hat, and if I qualify for one of those. Um, it comes to my attention that there's a high chance that I am legitimately trucking nut. If you think about it, we're picking up the nation's rubbish, and there's a high chance that there's nut in there, just shifting it from one side of town to the next. So it gets me thinking, do I qualify to wear one of those glorious hats? Anyway, boys, keep up the good work. Manly forever. Every other team, never. You definitely Righto. qualify. Mate, send your details to turbo at that you will get you out a nut trucker trucker hat because you're out there trucking nut for yeah, the you're nation. Nut. But, yeah. and, and, and it could be either human seed or it could be like actual nuts that well, have been discarded. Well, I interpreted that in, in a variety of ways. Yeah. I reckon he's trucked old Steedens. I reckon he's trucked dead loads. Yeah. I reckon he's trucked... Actual, like, you know, discarded cashews. Pecans, cashews, almonds, almonds pistachios, peanuts, pistachios, beer nuts, almonds, et, et al. Et cetera. 
So you qualify, bro, 100%. Punters and dribblers, hellosport.shop. The trucker hats may still be available. Probably a couple left as of time. If you're if you get in, if you're an early bird type operator and it's 6 a.m. and you're listening to this, there's probably a couple left. Maybe, maybe not. Get in while the getting's good. Limited a dish. Fucking terrific. Won't be coming back. Won't be coming back. So anyway, that's us. Love you. Thank you. Thanks for still being here. Thank if you so much. If you've existed through Cabri fucking fountains nits. and nits and Con- co- okay, conspiracy theories, then you've done well. Macron's wife or uh, husband or husband photoshopped royal photos. Then hats off to you. I well love done. your work. Shout out the punter. Shout out the dribbler. Shout out manly. Ten dollar pizzas. Go manly. Go manly. Ciao. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>